Superbase is an open source backend as a service platform and it provides an excellent alternative to Firebase. With Superbase, we can go on to build uh, secure and performant backend applications without the need for managing your own servers. Now, this course is going to guide you through the various functionalities offered by Superbase and I'm going to show you how you can integrate it nicely, seamlessly with your Next.js application. Superbase offers a lot of features and in this course, we are going to be taking a look at a variety of them which includes authentication. We are going to explore different authentication providers supported by Superbase which includes Google Provider, GitHub Provider and also email login with magic links. Then we are going to take a look at database management where you will be learning how to create and manage your database schema in Superbase. Now we have two ways of doing this in Superbase and Superbase offers us an SQL editor and a table editor. Now we are going to see how we can manage our database making use of the SQL editor so that we can know what actually goes on under the hood and with our knowledge we are going to feel comfortable making use of the table editor. We are also going to be taking a look at RLS row level security where we'll dive into writing RLS policies to control access to your database tables based on user permission. Now, Superbase also offers database functions and triggers and you're going to discover how to create functions that you can call in your Next.js applications and triggers that also automatically execute based on specific events in your database. We are also going to see how we can protect pages in our Next.js application and we are going to cover different techniques for protecting specific pages and also implementing server-side authorization. And with Next.js, we also have server-side actions and you're going to learn how to create server-side actions in your Next.js application to handle complex logic on the server. And then we have middleware. So finally, we are going to be taking a look at middleware where we're going to explore how to make use of middleware to refresh user sessions and also implement server-side authorization. Now, by the end of this course, you're going to feel very confident working with Superbase and also integrating it into your Next.js project. This is code with Larry and I am super excited to be bringing this to you. Now, if you love the course, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And if you're new, don't forget to subscribe without wasting any more time. Let's dive in. In order for us to get started, we have some boilerplate code and i'm gonna drop a link to the github repository for this project and we actually have two branches in the master branch we've got the starter code and if you come over to the deployment branch over here and over here we've got the finished project so in order for us to get started please do come over to the github here and clone this project you can just um, copy the url over here and come back to your terminal and over here you can just git clone and paste in the url so go ahead and clone it and the idea is so that we have this starter code and this is going to enable us to focus more on the next JS and Superbase side of things and not having to type out anything um, on our own. So please do go ahead and clone the project. And once you're done, we can now get started. Okay, so once you have been able to clone the project, next thing you want to do is to run npm install. And once you run npm install, do go on and start the project running npm run dev. And now you're going to see the boilerplate code, which we are going to be fixing step by step as we um, take a look at Superbase and how we can integrate it in our next JS project. So this is the application. We have this model where we can authenticate using Google and GitHub and where we can also authenticate via email. We have some um, validation going on here with react hook form and then we also have this model which we can use to update the profile and 
choose the logo and if we come over to this profile page over here you would see what we've got in here and we have this form which we are going to be using as server action to update the skills section which is currently hard coded and this user image so this image is going to be here as well as this which we are going to be updating using this model to update the title so with this model we can go in and change this logo here and have the user job title here so this is it and there's actually lots to learn because we're going to see how we can authenticate using this google provider github provider um, using magic link we're going to be definitely protecting this profile page and yeah we're going to see how we can make use of super base storage because this image we're going to be uploading it to the super base storage we're going to be writing rpc calls over here to make sure that we can call um, some function we are going to be defining in our super base client so let's not waste any more time let's um, get started and we're going to start with our super base um project so head over to superbase.com all right so you're going to come over to your superbase dashboard and here we are going to be doing uh we're going to be setting up our authentication because let's get started with our authentication do go on and create an account if you don't have one already and come over to this um to your dashboard and here you're going to be presented with projects and if you are just creating an account first thing you want to do is to create an organization and once you're done creating an organization, you're going to be creating a project. And to create an, an organization, you just need to present a name, the type, and the pricing plan. The free tier is going to suffice in our case. All right, but for me, I'm just going to create an, a, a new project under this code with library organization. Or you can click here, new project, and you can choose the organization from here. So I'll choose this, and now I'm going to give this project a name. I'm going to give it the name of Superbase next js guide any name of your choice and i'm going to generate a password here and go on to create this new project now we're going to give the superbase engine some time to go on and um, create this project for us and i'm seeing here exceed um, usage limits in your case you shouldn't be seeing this but once this is done setting up our project we can now go on to um, take a look at the different providers that next um, that Superbase gives us and we're going to want to come over to this authentication section so do go on and click on it it won't navigate because this is currently building but once it is done setting up the project we should be able to explore and see what it looks like all right so it is done building up the project and this is what we get this is what the project looks like the dashboard and if we come over to the authentication section here you see that we have different um configurations such as policies providers rate limits and here you see email templates you can go on to customize how the different email you're going to be sending to your user is going to look like the magic link the invite user and these are the uh, message variables and you all also have a preview on how it looks like here but we want to come over to the providers and you see here the email provider by default is automatically enabled so we don't need to do any extra setup here we want to come over to the github as well as the google provider and for us to set up github authentication we need to open up our github account and for that i will just bring this browser over here and i will place it side by side with this that i've got here okay now this is going to enable me to authenticate to come over to my github profile and once you're here you can come over to this avatar over here in your github and from there you can come over to your settings and once in your settings you're going to come over to your developer settings okay so here we want to look for this oauth apps and we are going to create a new oauth application and i'm going to give this application a name of superbase next js guide like this and for the home page url is going to be our local host so we can just copy the home page url and paste it in here 
but the authorization callback URL. If we come back to our Superbase, you would see over here we have this callback URL for OAuth. So this is going to be your callback URL. You can copy this and use this in here and register your application. Once you have your application registered, you're going to be given this client ID and you can just paste this in here as well as a client secret. Go on and generate a new client secret and I'm going to authenticate myself. And once you're authenticated, you're going to be seeing your client secret. So this is my client secret and I'll paste it in here. Now, if you reload, you might miss this. Actually, I'm going to reload and show you, you might need this. And you see, you need to generate a new client secret if you refresh. So it's important that you um, paste it here. And now don't forget to toggle this checkbox to enable GitHub. And you can go on to save this. All right, so that's one. And once we're done with that, we need to come over to our console.cloud.google.com so that we can also set up the Google provider. So come over to console.cloud.google.com and you want to look for this section here this drop down and here you need to go on and create a new project okay and you'll be prompted to give this project a name i would also give the name of superbase nextjs yt i can you can any name is going to suffice it's just a name you're going to use to sync with this and i'm going to click on create and over here you would see this spinner that means it is creating your project and once it is done, automatically, you should be navigated into that project, okay? But if for some reason you're not navigated, you can click on this drop-down and you can select the project. So in my case, I'm going to select Superbase Next.js YT, which was a project we just created now. All right, so we want to do two things, basically. We want to come over to this navigation menu, or you can see here APIs and Services. If you come over to this navigation menu, pin product, you also see APIs and services and you want to get the credentials. But first, let's set up our OAuth consent screen. So you can click on OAuth consent screen and give this a second for it to load up. We need to choose the user type. We are going to go with external because it's available to any test user that just has a Google account. Internal is if you have a costume Google um, domain and you just want it to be within your organization. So let's click on create and next we need to give this app a name and your name, this name is going to be the name of, let's see, the name of the app asking for consent. So I'll give you the name Superbase um, Next JS Guide and for support email, I will choose my email address and also for the developer contact information. I will also go on to fill in my email address. So save and continue. And once this is done, you see the next is scopes. For scope, you don't need to do anything over here. For test users as well, it's good. You can save and continue and you just see your summary over here and you can go back to your dashboard. All right, so the next we wanna do is to go for our credentials. So over here, you would see the credentials. You can click on the credentials and once you're here, we want to get the client ID as well as the client secret. So click on this create credentials section here and come over for this um, to this OAuth client ID. And we're going to click on that, give this a second to load up. And now we need to choose an application type. It's a web application. And we need to update this authorized redirect URIs because if you come over here, I'm just going to expand this. If you come over here to Google, you will see we have this, uh, where is it, callback URL for all authentication. So copy this, and this is going to be the new URI you're going to add in here. And once you have, do go on and save it. And then you're going to be given the client ID as well as a client secret. So I'm going to copy this client ID. And I'll paste it in here as well as a client secret. You can copy this client secret and paste it in here in your Superbase project. And don't forget to enable sign in with Google. And once you're done, we can click on save. Now I'm just going to minimize this. We are going to come back to this once we are done deploying our application. And for now, we can focus more on our Superbase and our next JS application. Cool, so we have these providers set up. 
now let's come back to our next js application and if we come here we have this authentication model okay which we can use to make use of this um different providers so how do we sync superbase to our next js project to enable us um authenticate ourselves if you come over to the source folder and you come over here to this utility folder you would see here that we have two files and we need the superbase client one is for the browser and the other one is going to be for the server side okay and that's why we have these two files one for the client and this for the server and this one for the server you see we have this use client direct use server directive over here so let's um, install superbase ssr so npm install at superbase ssr do go on and install this and we're going to be creating two clients let's start with the client for the for the browser and to create this we are going to be importing the create browser client which will be coming in from the package that we just installed so here we are going to bring in the create browser client like this and we should not forget to export this as a const so export const create browser client here okay so this is going to be sorry we are not going to be exporting this as const i'm going to actually initialize it to a name so we can give it a name of superbase um, browser client any name of your choice is going to survive but in this case since we know this is the client for the browser i'm going to be calling it superbase browser client and call it call this create superbase client and you see it needs two things it needs the superbase url as well as the superbase key now let's go on and get these two keys that we need and to get it you can come back to your superbase project and here under project settings you would see this api section under your configuration and once you're here this is your superbase url under project url so do go on and copy this and we need to obviously store this in your env so come over to your env.local and you see we have this next public superbase url if you don't have it because this is env and it's not synced to github please do go on and create this env.local file and provide this name the next public superbase url please there should be no typos and paste it in here and for the superbase anon key you can come here as well and just copy this anon key on the project api keys once you have this anon key we're going to paste it in here and now we can come back to our superbase client so i'm going to copy this url because we're going to be making use of it and come here to process.env and i'm going to paste this in here and the next process.env and i am also going to come here copy this and paste this in here we have an error because this can be undefined if you hover on this you can see it's of type string or undefined and we can just add this exclamation mark here or we can just cast it as a string type anyone is going to suffice it's your responsibility to make sure that when you're building your project or when it's deployed you have this um, envs um, defined all right so this is for the client and now we're going to do the same for the server and you might be wondering where am i seeing all of this code from now if we come over to let's see if we have the documentation somewhere here all right i'm gonna take a second and i'm gonna open the documentation in a separate tab and together we can make use of this documentation okay creating a superbase client for ssr all right and this is what we installed superbase ssr and we haven't installed this superbase js yet we're going to install it when we need it and you see here where we have this those two environment variables defined so it's important that you define it with these same names and here if you come over to your client component this is just what we did okay we have this create browser client and we just defined these okay and the reason why we did it in a separate file and not doing it directly in the client and in our uh, page is because we might want to reuse this client application wise and application wide and it's not going to make sense to you know define this in each application that we are going to be needing it okay and if we click on the server component you would see that this is how it works for 
the server client which we are going to be doing right now so um let's come here to the super base server and we already have this function we are exporting and in here i'm just going to come back to the documentation and i'm going to copy everything that is inside this function okay and i'm going to paste it in here we have an error because cookies needs to be imported from next headers so let's go on and import cookies and you also need to import the create server client from superbase ssr so let's go on and also import that and you see here it is also making use of this superbase url as well as the anon key all right but rather than initialize it to this superbase constant and export i'm just going to export it directly sorry i'm going to return so i'm going to be this function now is going to be returning this superbase client promise okay which is what we're returning here but you see these cookies is just for getting cookies in our case we also want to go on and set cookies because we are doing authentication things we don't just want to retrieve the current session and for that if you come over to this route handler you see the more like the complete code so the same thing that we have these cookies and all of these so i'm going to just copy this set and remove and once you've got there, um, got to that, you can paste it in your project. Now, cookies option is a type. So let's go on and import it from SSR. So I base SSR. And here we can just add this type, you know, annotation there because that's how it is in the documentation like this. And we are good to go. So let's go on and save this. And we can start our application using npm run dev. All right, so what is the next step? Now we have these clients. We want to make use of these clients when we are when we need to make use of Superbase. And let's come over to components, come over to our navigation bar because in the navigation, sorry, not the navigation bar. If you come over to the authentication model, now this is the model that is responsible or that pops up when we click on this authenticate, this um, auth here from the application and the way it works is using react context now let me just take 30 seconds to explain for those that might not understand how it's working in case you want to understand the code the first thing we do here we have this um, context and here we have this auth model context and this is the state we have to, to know when the model is open to toggle the model and to also close the model and here we have a provider if you're used to context you know the context needs a provider and here we have the auth model provider where we are setting some states here to show the model and to also to toggle the model and we pass the state as value to this provider and the last thing we do if we come over to the layout.tsx is we wrap this model provider with our entire application so that's why we are able to see this model all right so that's the gist of what's going on now, it doesn't matter how you work with models in your application. It can be a separate component, true or false. But I guess you want to learn and you have some UI you already laid out or you just want to know how the methods to call and, you know, stuff like that. So um, let's start with the email authentication. And I'm actually going to get rid of the password because we are doing password authentication. We're going to be sending a magic link to the user. So I'm going to delete this password and also delete this here and also delete this um that we've got over here now once all these are gone we can save up and come back to application and we should reload and we should just see only the email so what happens when we provide an email so test at test.com if we come over to the ui you see we have this on submit which we are passing to this hook form um submit over here so this on submit and we have the values here so for that i'm just going to console.log these values now if you want a separate tutorial on how this works on how to do this form validation and stuff like that please do let me know and i can make a separate video for that but i just want to focus on superbase next.js integration over here so if we log this you see this is a client component and this console.log won't be showing up in our terminal here it is going to be showing up over here so let's click on submit and you see we see the log printed so we see this object now we want to call a function we want to call a function that is going to help us to submit this on the server side we don't want to go on and just submit this on the client 
and to do that we are going to come over to our actions so this actions folder and here you're going to see a superbase.ts file and i already have this function defined here with this use server um, directive so this is what you're going to do in your own application you want to call this function on the server side this is just what you're going to do and here you see this function is going to be receiving this object uh, email object of type string which we just logged to the console over here so what we're going to do here we're just going to console.log the email okay we are destructuring the email here and from this auth model we are not going to be logging the values what we're going to do now is to come here and say const maybe we destructure the response we're going to see in a second but we just want to go on and await the um, we want to go on and await we'll call it register with email and password and this is going to need the values which is an object so we can just pass these values here not false sorry the values that this unsubmit function is receiving and I'm going to save this and if we come back here you see we're just logging this to the console we're logging the email so now if we click on submit we shouldn't see it printed here on the on the user browser which you see it's printed right here on the server so this is a server function okay a server action and now we are sure that this function is being called on the server side you want to go on and do um, the form submission okay and now how do we do it remember we created two clients we created one client for the browser and we created another client for the server so we need to make use of the client i'm going to call this uh, superbase which is going to be equal to await the superbase server client that's the name we called it if we come up back to our utils superbase you see this function that we just laid out here and we have this we shouldn't forget to call it and now with this superbase client we can go on and do superbase things something like a response is going to be called to await our superbase dot off and you can see we can you make the make use of the sign in with otp like this and this needs the credentials and for the credentials we are going to pass the email okay is that email that we just printed out here and we also need to pass or we can pass an object option so we can pass this options which is optional and one we can pass is the email redirect to and if we hover on this email redirect to you see it is the redirect url that is going to be embedded in the email link when it is sent to, to, to the user's email so in this case we are just going to come to http forward slash localhost 3000 it is important that you update this url when you deploy your application i might forget hopefully i don't but if you deploy application it is important that you you know update this url with your project or with your domain url to make sure everything works perfectly and now we have the response we're going to re return this response to the client okay now to the client because we know that this function is being called on the server and to do that we need to stringify this and we're going to stringify the response now i already know this response is going to have two objects if we have these dots here you see it has data and error now we know that this response is going to have a data and an error object when we come back to our authentication model we want to go on and destructure that error and object and for that we are going to call this response which is going to be equal to await this okay and the next thing we can do is const we are going to destructure the error and the response that we just saw some seconds ago and this is going to be is it response or is it data let's be sure let's go back and double check if we come back here and we say dot it is error and data all right so here it should be error and data and now remember it's a string we need to pass it back to an object so we're going to do json.pass and we're going to pass this response all right so this is all we need to do as easy as it is we can say if we have an error then we just want to log to the console sign in error and we just want to also go on and return so i'm just going to paste in here and go on and return this is it and if we have some data you can go on to log it to the console we don't need it for anything and i'm going to save this now let's come back to the documentation and see if we are missing out a step and after all of this we can come over to 
this um, email auth with kpce flow all right so once you're navigated here you see that we need to do something like this in our next js we need to create a file at app auth confirm route.ts okay so we need to create this file and this file is going to be doing some things okay and if we see here in order to use the updated email links we will receive the setup endpoint for the token hash along with the type you know we need to create this so that's why we're going to go on and create an api endpoint for handling the token hash okay and this is where you can see it in the documentation now we're going to copy this and we're just going to be updating one thing here and let's go on and create the file you see it's app in our app directory auth confirm and route.ts so let's do that we're going to come here to our app folder and we already have this auth and here we have confirm and we have callback okay we have these two files or folders already created if you clone the boilerplate code you're going to see this and that's where this comes in handy now we're going to create the router.ts file and here i'm going to paste in this okay now we're going to be changing one thing here and actually we're not changing anything here okay everything is good to go here um, it's when we are working on OAuth that we are going to be changing uh, something in the file we are going to be copying, okay? And so that you look for this and it's easy for you to see when you're you know, referencing this tutorial, I'm going to paste in this link over here, okay? So if you come to the down of the file, you're going to see this link in here for docs. All right, so this is it. Now we can go on to test out our email authentication in our project and to test it come back to our application i'm going to give this a reload and give me a second to open up my mail and i have my mail opened up in this tab over here so let's click on auth let's click on my email so this is my email and i'm going to click on submit um, I know we don't have any loading state or anything like that. I'm sure it's quite easy to implement, you know, using use um, state and stuff like that. So I'm just going to leave that. And now if I come over to my email, you see over here that the email arrived and this email arrived zero minutes ago. And I'm going to come over here and confirm my email. And once I confirm my email, you see I am redirected back to our application with this code here. All right. Now we don't have any UI update, but one way we can know if we correctly set up this authentication, if we come back to Superbase and we come over to this authentication, we see this new user here. So that means we have successfully authenticated via email, uh, magic link, passwordless authentication, and we have our user here now we might want to save this user in our database maybe we want to st store this user here we're going to come back to this but before we do let's come back here and test out all other authentication providers that we just set up okay so for that i'm just going to come back to our domain and actually i'm going to delete this user because it might be the same email or not so um just maybe i reuse this email for testing out google and uh, authentication or github um to not have any clash well or uh, any errors i'm just going to delete this user email but we see that it is actually working okay and next let's go on and test our google authentication and now we're going to come i'm just going to remove this and remove this and remove this okay so now we are here where we have this um, Google on submit and also this GitHub on submit. And what I want to do here, because we are making use of different providers, I'm not, I'm going to change the name rather than call it GitHub authentication. I'm actually going to call it social auth. Okay. So this is going to be working for both Google and GitHub authentication. And for that, we want to pass the provider. Okay, so if we are using Google or we are using GitHub, something like that. And this provider is going to be of type provider. And this provider needs to be imported from Superbase, Superbase.js. Now, 
Again, if you clone this project, you would already have this Superbase, Superbase JS. And in case you don't, please do go on and install it. It's just a simple npm install like this, and you're going to have it in your project. No extra setup is needed. Okay, so we have this um, social auth, and now we have an error here. Okay, let's actually test the GitHub, and once we are done testing GitHub, we can go on to test our Google authentication. Okay, so how do we bind this now to this function? We can call dot bind, or you can use an arrow function, anything like that. And dot bind, we are going to pass this for the context, and then we'll need to pass the provider. And you see, we have different providers here. And how does it know? It knows because we just didn't use the of type string here. If we had said the type string over here, you know, we wouldn't have had these options. Okay, so this is, since this is GitHub. We are going to be passing GitHub right here. Okay, and this is for the GitHub authentication. And why are we having this error? Because cannot find module superbase superbase JS. Okay, so perhaps it didn't install. And I'm just going to npm npm install this, and then it should be good to go. All right, so let's give it a second for the installation to complete. And once it is done, we should be free to test this out. And for the Google authentication, to be honest, there's no extra work. It's just as simple as this as well. So I'm just gonna copy this on click and paste it over here. And for the provider, I'm going to pass in the Google provider. And why are we having an error here or why are we not having auto completion all right so let's give this a second for installation to complete and let me actually check for some reason the installation isn't working so i will just fast forward through and check this all right so i've got it installed it was just some network connection issues on my end and i'm going to go on and restart our application and kill this terminal and let's see if we are going to get the auto completion for Google authentication. And now we do. All right. So I'm going to save this and we have some warnings. Let's see. I think everything is okay. All right. So let's reload our application. And now we can test out either the Google or the GitHub um, authentication. And once this reloads, we can be sure that you know, we have our provider, we don't have any user. So I'm just also going to reload over here. And once we reload, you see over here, we don't have any users. So I'm gonna click on off and I'm going to click on Google authentication over here. So once this um, Google authentication is clicked on, we should have the prompt, do we? Oh yeah, we, we haven't set up uh, the social provider. All right, so how does this work? Um, what we're going to do here is const response because we're going to get some response. And this response is going to be equal to await and we need to await our Superbase browser client. So remember, we are doing all of these on the client side. So we're going to make use of the Superbase browser client. And there we can call dot auth. And we can also go on to call dot sign in with all authentication. Okay, and signing with all authentication is going to take the credentials object. And here we want to pass the provider and this provider is going to be equal to this provider that we passed in here. So in the case of Google is going to be Google like this. Okay, so you see, and next we are going to pass some options and this options is an object and we can specify redirect to. Okay, and we want to redirect to and I'm, now we're going to have our location, not local store, location.origin. And we can call slash auth slash callback. Now, you might be wondering, where do we have this URL? We just have this here. And where do we have it in our code? We're not doing anything with the response, so we can just go on to await this. So where, where are we you know, having this? So if you come back here, you're going to see this um, auth callback and file route that we have here and we don't have the route defined yet but if we come back to our superbase um, api 
and you just come over here you see o auth with kp um k pkce flow you would see here that we need to set up this auth callback route.ts again i'm gonna copy this and i will paste it in here just for documentation purposes for you when you're going through the code to know where i'm getting all this code from and from here you see that we have this um auth callback and we need to have this route.ts and in that case i'm going to copy this and come back here to this callback and create this route.ts file and i'm going to paste this in here so remember i said we are going to be changing in one thing here and this is the only thing we need to change right not we're going to remove this next from here from line 32 so this is the only thing we need to change and i can just mark it here changed and also paste um okay we already have the code the link to the documentation all right so we need this and you can see the reason why we need this in order to use oauth we need to set up an endpoint for the code exchange to exchange an oauth code for the user session okay and this which is set as a cookie for future requests made to superbase so that's why we need to go on and set this up all right so with all of these we are now good to go to testing out our o authentication i'm just going to reload the page to pick up the latest changes and make sure i save this as well and let's testing comes over to auth click on google give this a second and you see we have um, redirected here to this prompt i'm going to choose my email give this a second click on continue and if we've done everything correctly we should come back to our Superbase project and see this new user. Again, for now, we don't have any hints on our you know, UI. We are going to be working on that. And if we come here and click on this reload gear over here, we see our new user with the display name, with the email, the provider, and all of that, which is cool. So I'm going to be deleting this user again so that we can test out the GitHub authentication. But for now, you're sure the Google authentication works. If you come back to the documentation, you see here, where we have this sign in with OTP, where we have the auth, and we have the redirect to which is all of these that we just said in. In our case, we press, we replace the example.com to make use of the location origin, and then we have the complete URL. Cool. So let's test out the GitHub authentication. I'm going to come back here, click on auth. And I'm actually going to be testing it on a different browser. So I'm going to be testing it right here, which is the browser where I have my GitHub and stuff like that. So I'm going to open localhost 3000 here, click on auth, click on GitHub. And once this loads up, you see we are now prompted to authorize. So the Superbase Next.js guide, which was the name of the project we gave. I'm going to click on authorize Larry Bright, which is my GitHub username. And once this is done, you see, we can come here back here. I'm just going to get rid of this because I'm not going to be using this browser. And if we come back to our spa base and give this a uh, reload, it's actually reloading. So we're going to give it a second for it to reload or we can just reload manually on our own. And once we reload, we should see over here the GitHub provider that we use to authenticate. All right, so let's give this a second. I think um, Superbase is taking some time. And here we see that we correctly authenticated using the GitHub provider. So all of this makes sense. And before we continue to set up our table editor, I want us to be able to, um, before we continue, set up triggers that's going to sync automatically when the user authenticates to our um, table here. I want us to protect the route because for now we don't have any ui in hints when the user has sign up or when a user is signing out we don't even have the sign out functionality yet so let's go on and define that and this is in our components often our navigation bar here in our navigation bar how do we go on and get the current user okay how do we retrieve the current user actually there are two ways to retrieve the current user and i'm gonna check for it if i see then we can make use of it if i don't um then i might have to fast forward and look for it right here in the documentation uh just give me a second okay so i'm actually gonna paste in the link here because i had to search around for it 
and here you see we have this uh, JavaScript client library okay and in this JavaScript client library you see here we have two ways and this is the get session data we have const data error is equal to await superbase of dot get session but you see here uh, it could be tampered with since the encoded session data is ret retrieved from local storage and to call get user instead um yeah i want to and here okay here um of get user you see here we have this retrieve uh, user and there are two ways we can make use of this get session dot session dot user for faster results but you know that get session is insecure on the server so when we are doing two things or when we are trying to get the user session you might see me do things like this get user okay to get the current user or you can see me do something like this get session okay and get session is faster on the browser but you see over here it is insecure on the server side so on the server side we don't want to make use of get session we want to make use of auth.get user okay so with that let's come back to our project and in our navigation bar we are going to be having this use effect and setting some states so let's come here and define two state values so const user like this and set user which is going to be equal to use state like this and no initial value by default and i also want to set another state so const is mounted set is mounted and this is going to be equal to use state and by default it is not mounted and the reason for this is so that we avoid any dehydration errors we might get in future and now we are going to have this use effect and in our use effect you know we have this callback function and an empty array of dependencies and in our use effect we want to go on and get the current user okay so we want to go on and do this where is it we want to do something like this so i can copy this but in this case we are going to be making use of get session because it's a browser thing so i'm going to come here and have this function which i can call get current user which is going to be equal to an async function where we are going to have this callback here and inside this function we want to go on and paste this in so we don't we're not making use of superbase we are making use of the superbase browser client remember that's the name we gave it and rather than get user which is going to work fine we can use get session like this and this is not going to return user this is going to return the session all right so we can come here and have a check still inside this function so still inside this get current user function we can check if we have session then we want to go on and update the user state so we're going to set the user to be the session dot user like this okay and after we're done with that we have an error why because type user or is not assigned to type undefined okay so to avoid the error we can come here in our set state and say this is going to be of type user or of type undefined like this and user should be imported from superbase superbase js library cool so once you have this here we can go on and call this get current user here okay so we're gonna get the current user and after that we also want to go on and set is mounted to true so that we can see something in our ui and the reason why we might not see something is because down over here we want to say if the component is not mounted so if it is not mounted we want to go on and return null all right so with this if we save this already and come back to our application we don't see a hint and one thing we can do we can just log to the console console.log the user object and once we log the user object to the console i'll open up the terminal and you see we correctly have this user with this id and all of these properties and now we can also go on to sign the user out okay and to sign the user out i'm going to define a function that is going to help us with that and we can call it const handle sign out and this is going to be called to this async function and signing out is pretty straightforward we can have an error 
and this error we are going to get it from awaiting our superbase browser client and then we can call dot auth and now we just need to call dot sign out like this and we are good to go all right so we can come here and destructure error and one thing we can say if we don't have any error so we want to update our ui we want to go ahead and set our user back to undefined okay so we can call this handle sign out we can call it on the button we have not defined yet so after or before our auth here we can have this button i'm just going to duplicate this um, update profile button and i'm going to call this sign out and on click we are going to call our handle sign out function and the variant is going to be destructive like this now to update our ui accordingly i'm first of all going to cut this and say if we don't have any user if that is true go on and show this authentication so the user can sign up but now all this profile link and um, update profile i'm going to say if we have a user then we want to go on and show these links okay and we should wrap it in a fragment like this now we are just hiding the link we are not protecting the page so i'm going to save this and if we come here you see we see sign out and all of these and if we go on to sign out as i said we are not protecting these pages we are just hiding the link if we go on to sign out give this a second and our ui should update accordingly and it does now we see just off and we are currently not authenticated but if we click on profile you see that we can still visit the profile page even though we are not authenticated and we are going to be coming to that in a second cool so this is the functionality we have so far and now we are going to be working more on our uh, authentication flow we are going to come back to superbase and next thing we want to do we want to be able to store a user that authenticates inside the project i think before we do that we should set up our middleware okay and to set up middleware we can come back to our browser and here if we look around for middleware just give me a second and here in the documentation we can just add this uh, environment equals to middleware like this and this is going to take us to the documentation link okay i just couldn't see where to navigate from here but this is where you would find it and here you can see over here we just need to create this uh, middleware.ts file and the middleware.ts we just need to copy and paste in all of this code and if you read further you see creating a web based client with ssr okay we don't get um this um okay yeah the use of this middleware you see this middleware example can be used to refresh expired sessions before loading server um, component routes okay and that's the function of this middleware so we're going to copy it and the middleware needs to be in the context of the same level as your app okay so in this case it's going to be in the source folder we are going to have the middleware.ts if you don't have the source folder it's going to be at your root folder here and we're going to paste in this middleware here and we don't need to do any other setup okay one last thing we should do is just to restart the server and maybe it picks up the latest changes so this is the code that we need and that is that is just it basically for the middleware setup all right so let's continue for them and let's make sure whenever we authenticate our user that we actually go on to store this user base in our um we store this user in our user base database the uh, super base database and for us to do that we can come over to our super base project and there are two ways we can go on to create this okay we can make use of the table editor and we can also go on to make use of the sql editor now it's important for us to you know know what happens it's important to for us to know what happens under the hood when we are making use of the table editor which we are also going to be making use of but for that i would like us to you know go on and work with this with the sql editor so come over to the sql editor and here we are going to be writing sql now if you don't know sql no worries i'm going to be guiding you line by line as we 
you know, write this out. So the first thing we want to write out is the create table like this. And now we need to give this table a name. We want to create a table. Yes. And what name of this table do we want? What name do we want to give? We want to give this table users. And inside here, this um, parenthesis, we are going to specify the properties, the columns that are going to be inside this um, user table. And one of those columns is going to be this, which is the ID column. And this ID is going to have a type of UUID. And this UUID, we want to um, want it to reference another table. And for that, we are going to make use of these references here. And then we're going to say this referencing auth.users. And this is, should not be null because we need an ID. And this is also going to be a primary key. And apart from that, we are also going to have an email, every user that authenticates. And this email is going to be of type text. And this is going to be unique and it should not be null like this. Again, we are going to have the full underscore name. Every user is going to have a full name and this full name is going to be of type text. And lastly, we are going to have the avatar URL, which is also going to be of type text. All right, so this is it, but all of these are optional okay so all of these are optional and that's why you know we are not um having this not null, not null, all of that here because we want the email to be unique that's why we have this unique and definitely every user needs an email okay so this is one and after that we want to go on and set up the rls so rls is um, row level security and with that we can go on to write some policies that is going to you know help us to secure our different tables okay and to do that we're going to say alter table and now the table is users and here we're going to say enable row level security like this and please don't forget to close it up with the semicolon okay so what this is going to do is going to enable rls on the users table okay so now we have this we want to create policies we want to create policies for um, data access okay and one policy is to go on and view its own data and also another policy that would allow the user to update the own data okay so for us to do that over here we're going to just come here and say create policy and this policy needs a name and i'm going to give it a name of can view on user data like this and after that we want to say on okay on users okay and now we're going to have this for and this is going to be for select okay for the select query if that if you're going if you can call it like that so for the select query and now this is going to be using what there's going to be more like a match because we want to make sure that it restricts users to view their own data, so only authenticated users. So we're going to say using auth.uid. So auth.uid like this. We're going to call this function. And we know under the hood, that's why base has this auth table. And that's where we have the, that um, auth table here. And we know it has this um, uid. And this is a function that is going to help us to retrieve the ID. So that's why we call it. And now this is going to be equal to ID. Okay. And ID making sure to is equal to the ID of this, this user that is, you know, trying to select or to read the data. Okay. So that's about it for this. And we need to create another policy like that. So I'm going to copy this and I'm going to paste this in here. Alright, so this other policy is to allow users to update on data. So we can just say can update update on user data like this. On users for now not select. This is going to be for the update query using all.id that is equal to id like this. Now the next thing we want to do is to create a function for handling the new user. And why do we want to do this? Because remember we said whenever we authenticate here, we see the user here, but we want to be able to sync that user to our user table. Okay, and now we will need to create a function that is going to 
um, help us with it okay all right so to do that we are going to have this create in here i'm going to place this in here so we can have this create or replace the create keyword is going to indicate that we are creating a new database object okay in this case it's going to be a function or we're going to come here and have or replace and this replace is going to tell the PostgreSQL engine to either create a new function that we're going to name not quite long or if it doesn't exist or it should go on to um, replace the function if it exists with the same name okay and we're going to give those function we have the function keyword and here we're going to give the function a name so we're going to say public dot handle underscore new underscore user like this and it's a function so we're going to have it like this and now this function is going to um return a trigger okay so this public handle new user is defined a function name with the schema public and an argument um which is empty which means there are no arguments okay that's what this means this function is not taking any arguments and after this we are going to tell it that we want to return a trigger so we're going to say returns trigger like this and trigger if you don't know are functions that can be called when an event occurs we're going to see it in a second because that's what we want we want it to be triggered whenever a new user signs up all right so it returns trigger and we're going to say as and as here we're going to have this double dollar sign and this double dollar sign just marks the beginning of a function body so that's why we have this double dollar sign and to end the function we're going to also have the double dollar sign here um did i close it by mistake no okay yeah so we're going to have this double dollar sign here and here we can have the function body okay and this function body means we are going to have begin like this begin over here and begin say the function the, the beginning of the executing block so we want to have a check okay we want to go on and have an if statement because we want to give a default avatar if there's no avatar so we're going to say if new dot raw like this and if new dot raw underscore user metadata like this and this new refers to the object that is being inserted in the table that triggered the function okay that's the work of this new and now this raw user metadata is um a i can call it a json field that is containing additional user information okay and then we are going to be calling this and here we're going to have this double greater than sign and this is just an arrow operator for assessing nested fields that is going to be within an object so we want to assess the nested field that is within the object and that nested field is going to be the avatar url so just right here we are going to have this is not double um it's going to be single quotes and now we're going to have the avatar url and now we have access to this avatar url we want to check if it is null okay so in case the user don't have or if it does if it does, if it is an empty string so we are going to copy this again and we're going to paste it in here and this time we're going to check if it's equal to an empty string and then we want to go on and set it okay so we're going to call this new raw uh, metadata like this user data like this and i'm going to set it to an image from unsplash okay and for that we're going to say it's going to be equal to we can make use of this json b underscore set now if you're not used to this this is just a postgresql function that is going to modify json objects and this function takes in three arguments the first argument is going to take is the existing json object we're going to pass it to it the second argument is the path okay the path we are going to how will i put it the path um within the json object that is to be modified okay and in this case we are going to specify it as a string we're going to see how it works in a second and then the third argument is the new value that we want to set all right so remember we said the first argument is the our existing json object so here we're going to pass in this new i'm going to copy this and paste it in here that is the um existing and then the second argument is going to be the path within the json object that we want to modify okay and now we're going to specify it with this 
and here we're going to have the avatar underscore url so that is that is the path we want to modify and lastly we are going to have what we want to set okay the new value and i just have this value from unsplash this image from unsplash uh, we're going to see it in a second i think it's quite a popular image if i paste this in here and load it this is the image we want to set by default so this image over here all right and to do that we are going to use single quotes and then double quotes okay and here we're going to set the new image like this and we're not done we're going to have this um, double column like this json json b like this and lastly what well, all this is doing is to cast the provided string literal to a json type um, for compatibility with json underscore set function okay this json b um, underscore set so that's what this is doing just casting it all right so we have this and remember we are in a we are within an if block so we need to end it and to end it i'm going to have here um and if and i'm just going to indent this for readability sorry i'm just going to push this here like this and here i will come here and end the if okay so now we are done with that we need to go on and insert the user data okay and this user data is also going to include the avatar url and to do that we are going to say insert insert into and then we have it in a public schema public.users and public.users we are going to pass the you know the variables remember we came here we created this user so it needs the id the email the full name as well as the avatar url okay so we can just come here and we're going to pass the id the email the full underscore name and also the avatar underscore url all right so this is it and now we need to have the values and the values is going to be the new.id okay so new.id remember the new the new is the values that we get from the newly inserted data that triggered the function so the data that triggered the function that's what new is going to be refer uh, referencing and the id so new.id is the id that is coming from the new record okay and after that we also want to set the email so we're going to say new.email and next we're going to say new.raw underscore because we want to get the full name it's an object user metadata and now we're going to have this arrow function and now we're going to get a full name okay so it's extracting the full name from the raw um, user metadata object so it's full underscore name please make sure there's no typos and the same for the avatar url so we're going to have comma and new dots and i'll paste this in here or i'm going to copy this and use it in here and we want to extract the avatar underscore url so these values you know id this is for the id it should make sure it matches this other email email um full name full name and that and please don't forget to finish it up with your um semicolon here and once we're done we are going to come here and return new so here we are going to return new like this and close it up with our semicolon and here we're going to have the end of the function executable and we need to define the the language so to do that we are going to come here and say the language is going to be the pl pg sql sql like this and we're going to call the security definer like this and what is this line doing okay we are just saying that um this is going to specify the programming language used for the function body okay so that's just what is going on there and then this um, security definer over here is just a clause that defines the security context that um, under which this function is going to be you know executed 
All right, so we have this, and this standard definer is just more like the default, okay, of the user who calls it. All right, so we shouldn't also forget to cover this up with our semicolon. And now you know this function returns a trigger. And to have the trigger, we're going to come over here and create the trigger. And this trigger, we can give it any name, any name of your choice. In this case, we're going to call it on auth like this, user created. And here we're going to say after insert. So because we want this to this trigger to be called on insert. And it's going to be called when a new user is entered on the auth.users. So the auth.users table. I think we have it over here. So you see this auth.users and that's the ID that this user is um, referencing over here. And that's why we have this auth.uid and stuff like that. Okay, because we know we have this auth table under the hood that Superbase makes use of. Okay, and after this, we are going to have this um, for each row. And this for each row is more like a clause that clarifies that this trigger should execute on the defined action for each row that is going to be inserted into this table. Okay, and it just makes sure that it is more like applied for any new um, user record. Okay, any new user record that is going to be created, this is going to be executed. So we're saying for each row, do go on and execute this um, procedure public handle new user. So remember, we just defined this function over here handle new user. So it's more like saying execute this function for us. Okay. And this is going to execute the function. It's a function, so we have to call it. And now we're going to end this with our semicolon. Now, if we've done everything correctly, let's hit on run and give this a second. And let's see, we should have um, success. And we have an error. Okay, and this error is coming from line 10. And we have an error because this should be users, not user. Author table users, okay? And let's also hit run again. And we have an error from line 27. And this error is from this um, and if. Um, do we miss something? Yep, we forgot to add this, to close this up. And that's why we had this error. So in this case, let's go on and run selected again. And now we see success, no rows returned. So remember, we have a function that we defined here. So if we come back to our database and we have this function, and we give this a second. We have this handle new user function that returns a trigger. So let's go on and trigger this function. So remember, if we come back to our SQL editor, we have this that we just defined. This trigger that is going to be calling this function. And this trigger is going to be called whenever a new insert happens on the auth users. The auth users is this authentication users over here. You can see it in the URL auth users. I'm going to delete this user so we have everything fresh, everything from scratch. And once the user is deleted, if we come over to our table editor, we should have this user's table we just created. And this user table should have two RLS. So you see it has two. And these two authentication policies is what we defined can update on user data and can view. So we have it here in this SQL editor like this. I'm going to copy this SQL because it's quite a lot. And I'm going to come over here in the source code and just write this SQL um, dot, dot what, txt so that you can copy it um, when you're for the complete project. You can just copy this, paste it, and follow along for the explanation. So I'm just going to save this in here. And once we have this, let's rename the name. We can make use of this um, Superbase AI to click on rename the name. It's going to give us a suitable name. And I'm going to also the description. I'm going to click on rename query. All right. So this is the moment of truth. Let's come back to our table editor. Let's try to trigger it and make sure that our local host is up and running. And once everything is up and running, we can now go on to create a new user. OK, so let's wait for this to load up. And now it is done. We can come over to our authentication section. Uh, auth here, let's authenticate. Let's click on Google. We want to create um, or register with Google. And once this is done, let's give it a second. And once we authenticated, we come back to our spa based project. We come to our users table. And here you see we have this user ID with the email, the full name, and everything. So now we are syncing our authentication flow 
over here you see we have the user here with also our database okay in our users table and this is super super cool now we have this we can go on to you know display the user table here the updates so for that let's come over to app we can come over to our page.tsx all right so here in our home page um we have this action that we defined but i think we don't even need to make use of this action okay so we're on the server page so what we're going to do here to get the user data you see here to retrieve a user from the documentation we can use get session on the browser because it is um, faster it's faster but you see it's insecure and for that we can make use of this get user all right so here i'm going to paste this in and we're going to bring in the superbase server client like this and for that we can call uh superbase server client we need to execute it like this and now we can call dot auth we need to import this sorry give me a second and here what i'm gonna do here i'm gonna say const superbase is going to be equal to this okay to await this so i'm going to cut this and paste this in here and now we can say superbase.auth.get user all right and rather than data we are going to get what we are going to get the user okay and you know we want to get the user data we can console.log the user in here like this and why do we have this error um user does not uh, okay because we forgot to await um okay let's see what do we have here yeah we have data and from data can we destructure user yes we can cool so now we have this user i'm just going to comment out this card save this and let's see what we print out right here in the terminal and now you see we print out this user okay but if we come here and say console.look user.id you would see here that we are going to get the user id now from with this user id we want to go on and get the get the user data okay and to do that we can come over here and say okay this get user data should get the user id which is of type string and you see this user type is just a type that was defined already for you in the types app.js you're going to see this user type here and in here we want to go on and use that id to fetch uh, the user so we're going to say const this is going to be equal to the uh, await and now we need to also await superbase so i'm going to copy this that we are doing here and paste this in here and we should go on to import the superbase client okay and if we are doing this perhaps we don't even need to be extracting the user from here we can just cut this and know that we are going to get the user id here so we, we can paste this here like this and know that automatically we are going to be retrieving the user id and not request for the id here and we can have a check if there is no user so if there is no user like this then we want to go on and return and rather than return we need to return null over here and not just return null we need to just log to the console to give ourselves more user or something like that and you can print it here all right so we have this and now we show we have the user we can go on to get the user id and we can await our superbase dot from users we want to query the users table it needs a table and we are going to say from users we want to go on and dot select and we want to go on and select everything and we want to set the id where dot id um dot equal like this where the id it needs a column name where the user id is going to be equal to our user dot id over here cool and this is going to give us the we can get the data or we can get the error 
all right so if we have an error we want to go on and log that error to the console and if we have data we just want to return the data over here which is what we are going to be doing here now before we test it out we are actually missing one very much important step and that is syncing these web-based types to our project we're not making use of the types in here but we might need this down the line and to do that we are just going to i'm just going to google you can just come here and google superbase types and he, see here you see generating types from typescript and first we need to npm install superbase like this and we're just going to copy this open up our terminal and paste this in here now while the installation is going on we need to log into superbase and i will just give this a second for it to log in and then we can go on to generate the types okay so now this is done before we log in it's always a good practice to log out in case you have any spa based project or process that is ongoing i would say yes and now we need to say mpx super base login and please it's important that you have your browser tab open the browser that you use for your spa based project because now if you hit enter it is going to automatically redirect you to the browser and once you're done it should tell you that automatically well done you're signed in you can close the window and if you come back to your terminal you see that you are now logged in the next thing we want to do is to copy this command and to copy this command we are going to get the types in our project so let's paste this in here and you see we need to do two things it is looking for the type superbase.ts but in this case i want it to be in the source so you see it is in the source types and here we can call it superbase dot ts okay and to update the path we should have source here source dot types and superbase dot ts and for the project ref it needs our project id please don't get rid of the double quotes we are going to be making use of it let's come back to our superbase project come back to our project settings and our project settings we can copy up this reference id paste this in here hit enter give this a second and watch this populate okay so this is super super cool and now we can npm run dev and we are sure that we have our super base types synced with our project whenever we need it we are going to make use of it in this case we don't need it but it's important that we just have that in our arsenal and now we're going to come to our page.ts and i'm going to get rid of this and now we can get our user data our user data is going to be equal to await our get user data like this which is going to be coming in from our actions and we no longer need a client here and let's log this user data to the console so console.log user data and see the user data printed right here in the terminal we wouldn't see it because remember we just restarted our project and for that we need to um, recompile our project and once it compiles we should be taking a look here at this terminal this terminal is meant to be populated with the user data so here you see we are correctly making use of this get user data we are fetching we are getting the user data with our spa based clients from our session over here and now you're, we are using the user id that we get to query our spa base and return the spa base um, return the user right over here to the client cool we are sure we have this user data and you see this user has an id an email a full name and an avatar url so we're going to pass this user data here to our user card and if we come over to our user card it's a component i created for you um, so that you you don't have to stress yourself you see it is expecting this type user which has more more like the job title the job logo we are going to be having these fields yet so when we go over to the profile page and everything is just going to work once we click on save and we come back to our application we're just going to give this a reload and now we should see the user avatar here cool with the user name as well as the user email all right so we are sure we have this user data these user credentials now if we come over to our profile page we need to do more work we need to go on and update this user profile okay and this form is coming in from where so i'm just going to close all of this and come back here and if we come over to the page 
the profile page over here you would see where we have um okay not here actually sorry it's coming from our mobile provider so let's quickly go over there to our components and here we have our create profile model all right so all of this has been set up for you already and you see here it just needs this function values and if we log these values to the console so let's come here and the job title software engineer and it's obviously job title of your choice and for the logo i'm just going to click here and i have this logo that i generated with ai and let's open up our browser and click on submit and we see we have this image file list so you see the file list and we have the job title pre being printed right here on the console and we, to create this we are going to be storing this in our buckets we don't have our bucket yet so let's quickly work on that um, let's come over to superbase and now we're going to come over to our storage and our storage we want to create a new bucket the name of this bucket we can give it images and this is going to be a public bucket to make it easier on ourselves to avoid any authentication errors or like that you can toggle this to restrict the file size but you see the global upload limit is 50 megabytes so even if you are restricting the file size the limit you have is 50 mb i'm going just going to um, deactivate this and you can also specify the mime type so i'm just going to use this image start to just accept images like this and i'll paste this in here and click on save so we have created this bucket and buckets as well can have policies so come over to policies and here you have images public you're going to create a new po um, policy go over for full customization and select all of these give this a name i'm just going to give it a name of image policy and that's about it and none other needed you see it defaults to public and let's click on review let's click on save policy and we are good to go cool and now we come over here we don't have any image okay and let's continue with our application so what are we going to do we need to have the uuid so we are going to npm install um, uuid so you should also have this already installed but this is how the installation is going to work npm install uuid and we're going to come to the top and we're going to import uh, v4 um, where is it v4 from uuid but we're going to say as uuid and if you have errors for the types you can also go on and install the types okay and now we have the uuid we want to generate a unique id because we want to you know create this bucket and we want each bucket to be unique so we're going to say const uu unique id unique underscore id is going to be called to uuid like this now we have the id the next thing we want to do is to go on and have our try catch block and in this try block we want to first go on and have our image file remember we saw it in our console not quite long and this image file is going to be from this values dot image and here we are going to take in the first like this okay and after this we can also have this condition in case we don't have the image and after this we are going to come here and get the job title and the job title is going to be called to values.job title like this. All right, so we can have a quick check if we don't have any image file, if there is no image file, or if there is no um, job title. In that case, we don't, we don't want to continue. We just want to return. You can show a toaster or anything like that. And we can just log to the console missing fields. Okay and now we want to go on and do the exciting thing we want to go on and from superbase uh, our superbase client we want to go on and you know do all of these so here what we are going to do next is just come right here and say const like this we can get our data we can get our error and this is going to be equal to our superbase browser client okay we're on the on the browser we can call the superbase browser client and from the client we have dot storage and storage is going to say which bucket okay 
and now we need to pass the id the id is images and why is it images because that is the name we gave our bucket so images over here okay so we are going to save from images and then from images we want to go on and upload so what we want to upload we want to upload the we want to give it a path okay the path we are going to use to fetch the image later so we can say user like this and now we want to go on and add the user.id and we don't have our user defined yet we're going to get it in a second and next we can have the uuid which is our unique id unique id and next we need to pass pass in the file so the file is going to be our image file and we can pass this object for cache uh, control give it um, 3600 and next we want to go on and set offset to false like this cool so once we have all of these we want to check if we um, have our, our data what do we get uh, we are not awaiting so we shouldn't forget that uh, actually we don't need to await and from this we can store it in this upload we can call this um we can call this the upload image promise okay we, are, we haven't called it yet okay if we hover on this you see this is not async okay but this is the promise we are going to trigger this in a second and to trigger it we are going to have const and we are going to destructure it from here and this is going to be equal to await our can await promise dot all so await promise dot all and this needs the value so we're going to call this upload image promise and now we can come here to call this our image data like this and over here we can check if we have any um, error so we can say const image error is going to be equal to our image data dot error okay so if we have any image error then we want to log that error to the console and we also want to go on and return so this is what we want to do but if we were able to successfully upload now we want to go on and perform an update operation on our user and to do that we can have this which is going to be equal to await our superbase client and then we can say from our users table we can go on and call the update query and from update we have the object where we pass the values the values we haven't defined yet we're going to give it the name of logo and this is going to be our remember our image data and now we're going to have the data dot path okay so this is going to be the path we are going to be getting here and apart from that we also want to have our job title like this and this job title is going to be referencing this job title cool um this is about it and now we need to refresh our form and um if we are successful here we are going to come over here and refresh our form and also we want to go on and have access to our use router hook so right here i'm just going to const router is going to be equal to the use router coming in from next navigation please it should be coming um, coming in from next navigation and when we restart the form we're going to call router dot refresh like this um why are we not having router dot refresh over here and why don't we have this so let's be sure that we imported the router from um sorry we yeah use router and use router we need to call it like this cool all right so the error is gone and lastly after that we also need to go on and close the model so we're going to call close create profile model and give the value of false and it's going to go on and close the model for us and again here where we are awaiting we can get an error so in case the update wasn't successful and we can remap this name to update user profile error and here we can just have a quick check if we have the error then we're going to return we're not going to 
do another thing and we are going to log the error to the console all right so now we need to get the user okay we need to get this user and how do we go on to you know get this user id because you see over here we are referencing the user and one easy way we can go on to do this is by coming here and let's say currents we are going to destructure this destructure this which is going to be coming in from await our spa based browser client and now we can call off dot get session like this and from here we are going to get our data and from the data we are going to be getting our session and from the session we are going to be getting our user so we can say const user is going to be equal to our session dot user like this and because this can be type user does not exist on type user or on undefined property user yeah it should be user like this all right so we can check if there is no user then let's just go on and return just go on and return and our code is fine and here we are referencing the user id please it's important to note when we are running this update we know we are looking at this table um, column and also the job title column we don't have them yet so let's go on and create them so i'm just going to give this a reload come back to our spa base project our table editor and here in our users table we are going to be adding two new fields we have seen how to make use of the sql editor in this case we are going to be um, i'm quickly going to delete the i think that we can leave it this user and this column name is going to be logo and this is going to be of type text and the default value is null and one constraint is allow nullable to allow it to be null and we can just go on and click on save so we have this logo and the next is the job title so job remember a job underscore title which is also of type text and it's uh, we can allow nullable and we can click on save so remember it is, is this logo and job title so before we go on and update we are up, uh, uploading the image and from images we are going to upload it with this path and give it the image file and all of that so um, if we have done everything correctly let's come back to our authentication to our application if i click on update profile and give this a job title of software engineer and select a logo and click on open one way um to know is we don't have any loading states or anything like that if we click on submit and we have done everything correctly this form should go because that's the logic we wrote so we're going to give this a second and our form isn't closing so perhaps we have an error somewhere and also I'll come here come to our storage buckets come over to images and here you see we have the image so the image upload actually worked but the update failed okay and you see it is failing because update requires a where clause so that is i'm going to delete this so that we can give it another retry and to delete this i'm going to come here and click on delete and click on delete all right so we forgot our where clause when we were trying to run the update and that was happening or that is happening around here all right so here we don't just go on and update like this we need to add our where clause so our where clause is going to be this equal to like this and we want to update where the id is going to be equal to the user dot id like this and this should be cool and over here Um, over here did we miss something let's see yep we are good to go so let's save this and give this another trial so i'm going to submit again give this a second for it to reload first it's going to upload the image and next it is going to come over here and update now you see our profile goes and that is the logic here we are closing the profile model and because it's closed if we come back to our bucket you would see over here on the images i'm just going to give this a reload we should see the image cool and this makes sense over here all right so this is the image path and also if we come over to our table editor on the users here 
you would see that we now have the logo and the job title uh, populated and this logo is pointing to the image path over here this is super super cool and now we are done with that we have seen how to read update and delete make use of buckets authentication different providers we want to display the user data here and that is no longer the create profile model duty that is our app profile page.tsx so we are going to be working on this page next and we want to do two things here the first we want to do is to fetch the user data and that is pretty much straightforward remember we have that function that does everything for us so we can just come here and say user data is going to be equal to await get user data like this and we call it so we have already written out this function together that goes on to return data or null so here we're going to have our user data and straight up if we log this to the console we are going to see the user data here if we are in the profile page so which yeah we are in the profile page we should see our user data here if we don't we can just come on to reload and give this a second and cool we see we fetch the user data and with this user data we can now go on to populate this um, field so here we have this h1 and this h1 is going to be the user data and now we can pass dot name or full name and after that for this paragraph we also want to perform the user data and this is going to be dot job title so let's go on and save this and that's about it if we save i'm going to i am going to leave the console we should see the user where is it the name and the job title so let's give this a reload and we should see those values um populated here so i did give this a reload let's reload it again and we're actually not seeing the user data or are we looking at the wrong place because here we should have it here just above the user image so let's give this a second and once it reloads we are actually not seeing the user credentials let's be sure i'm just quickly going to inspect this um here after this div i'm just going to expand this we have our h1 which is totally or which is empty cool and and for some reason we are not seeing the user data there i'm just going to paste this in here as the image alt okay for some reason and i'm quickly going to kill the terminal and npm run dev again we are currently seeing the you know the data and the terminal and for some weird reason we are not seeing it in our page so let's just reload and see if it um, gives us a kick and now we see our data all right so apart from that we want to also go on and get the user image so back to our application does it update let's give this a second and yeah so now we see the username as well as the job title all right so let's work on fetching the user image and you see over here this logo you know the user logo is the path okay it is not the actual image and to do that we're going to be making of um, server actions okay so we can call this user logo and this is going to be equal to await get user image so we haven't defined this yet and it needs the user logo okay so we're going to get this from our user data and this is going to be coming in from user data dot logo and now we can go on to you know define this get user image action so let's come over to our actions i'm going to create this get user image dot ts file and in here we are going to be making use of our server client okay so const get user image is going to be equal to async and here we need the image path which is going to be of type string and next we are going to have our super base and this super base is going to be equal to awaiting our super base server client and with our server client we need to call it and here we can come here to destructure what we get and we can call our super base and we can say dot storage 
and from storage we can access the image bucket so we can say from and we need the id which is images and we want to get the public url so we can say get dot get public url and now we pass the image path like this so from here we are going to get our data or we can go one level up to destructure the public url and we can rename this to user logo like this and we can now return the user logo so just here we are going to be returning this user logo like this and let's not forget to export this as the default so that we can use it in our application in our profile page so we're going to export get user image and here we are going to be importing the get user image like this from our actions all right we have an error but we know that we are also always going to have the logo so we can just add this exclamation mark here and we should be good to go and now we can pass this logo so this user logo right inside here to this um, image source so with this if we come back and give this a reload we are going to see that everything is going to update here so let's give this a second and keep an eye on this logo section that we have and this should be the logo or the image that we uploaded to our superbase buckets and here we see the ai image loading up and this image is this image that we have in our storage and here we have our buckets our images and now that is this image that we have over here okay so that's it maybe a large file or some network issues on my end but we see the image is um, loading up over here all right so we are done with this up next we are going to be taking a look at server actions we want to go on and update the user skill section and to do this is pretty much straightforward we are going to define or we already have this handle add skill i'm going to cut it and bring this handle add skill function here all right so we have this handle add skill which is going to take in this form data and now we are going to link this form data to our form so this is a form that we have over here and this form has this input it has this button and that's what we see here so the form with this input and this button now to make use of server actions on this form what we are going to do here we're going to have an action an action like this and this action is going to reference this handle at skill so let's go on and save this and now we are going to be working on this handle at skill here so we open this up if we come back to application nothing changes and here we're going to have our use server and I'm going to save this and next we want to get the skill that the user is going to add in the form this form this input has a name of skill so with this name we are going to be able to retrieve it so we're going to say con skill is going to be equal to form data and with our form data we can say form data dot get I want to get it with the name of skill like this okay so with that name and all we can do for now is just to log this skill to the console so remember we are submitting this form on the server so we expect to see this over here so we come back to our application and i just type react click on add come back here you see we react is being printed right here so we can just add a check if we don't have any skill please do go on and just return like this so let's go on and destructure this properties from an update user skill function we're going to define so this is going to be equal to await update update user skill and this is going to take obviously the user id as well as the skill all right so we're going to go on to work on this next and i'm going to copy this update user skill and come over to our actions paste this in here update user skill and here we're going to have the file okay so this is the server um action so we're going to have this use server and we're going to import our superbase server client coming from our utils file and we can have our const update skill which is going to be equal to this async function where we get the user id the user id is of type string and we're also going to get the skill and the skill also is of type string 
cool so here we're going to say con super base remember we don't have this skill in our user yet and this is going to be equal to await the super base server client like this and here we want to go on and update the user record so update the user record okay but um, one thing we can do is to also make sure we have this skill here to make sure everything has been correctly wired up and we're going to export this as a default so export default update the user skill and now we can come over here and import this and passing the user id which is going to be coming in from our user data dot id and we know we're going to have our user data and we're going to pass the skill in here all right so that's about it what well, we can just cast this as, as type string and it should be fine and for now we are not going to be making use of the response so i'll just get rid of it and come here and just log this skill to the console and also console.log the user id so if we come here and we click on add again and come back we see the skill and we see the user id so to update the user record what are we going to do we are going to be making use of our pc now in case you don't know our pc is remote procedural call and this is where we define functions remote functions as though we have the function defined in code and we're going to call that function and that function is going to help us in the context of superbase to update a record in our database all right so how does it work we're going to destructure the values which will come from await our superbase that we defined up above and now we have dot rpc now this needs a function name we don't have this function defined yet but let's say it has a name of add underscore skill like this and after that we need to go on and um, provide the options object here okay so let's define this function in our spa base if you have an error at this point is because you don't have this add skill function defined in your spa base project so for that you're going to most likely have some errors and let's go on and define this error pc so we're going to come back to our spa base come to our sql editor or there are two ways you can also come over to your database come over to your functions and you can create the function here okay so let's come over to our sql editor and now we want to create a new query and we're going to have our create or replace i've gone through all of these so i'm just going to quickly type it out create or replace function and the name add skill now this name add skill needs to match this name you're trying to reference in your code here add skill okay so we have the function execution it needs the text in the user underscore id this is of type uuid so this uuid type should match the user type here in your table editor the users you see that this id is of type uuid so it needs to be in sync to avoid any errors and next we need to add a new skill which we don't have yet so this will give us an error because we don't have this column yet but this new skill is going to be of type text and this function is going to return nothing so we can say it returns void and now we can have our function like this in here and let's quickly wrap it up by having our language and say plpg sql like this all right so here we're going to have our begin and want to begin an um, update like this users and we want to set our skill so the user skills which we don't have yet to be equal to skills okay that is the skills because what we want to do here is concatenation we are going to have an array so we want to have react we want to have node.js whatever skill and we don't want to perform a replace okay we don't just update the entire column we want to concatenate so this is how it works we're going to have this concatenation operator which is this double pipe and we want to add this array here like this and in square brackets we're going to pass in this new skill that we are going to pass into this function like this as the argument okay remember we have our role um, array ls our role level security and now we want to do this where the id okay the id on the users table where the id is going to be equal to the not equal like that just one equal 
to user underscore id that this function is going to be receiving as an argument and don't forget to close it up here and here we're going to end the function like this all right so this is a function now let's quickly before we run this function let's come over to our table editor and the user we want to add a new skill array so here we're going to add skills and the type is going to be of type text and we're going to define this as an array and we're going to allow nullable and click on save and now we're going to have this new skills column so we're going to come back to our sql editor and we have this okay so let's um, come here and rename this query we're just going to let the ai give us a suitable name click on rename and next we are going to click on run to go on and run this function all right so we have an error and this error is coming somewhere here create near us so let's see this is correct this is returns void this should be an s returns not return returns void we're going to run this again and success no rows returned now if we come back to our database we should see we have two functions so this add skill function you can come here you can inspect you can edit and you see the properties it takes in an id as the argument and a new scale and you see the types cool all right so let's come back to our sql editor and you see here we are passing this user id and the new skill as parameters or as arguments to this function and that's why in our code we have this object where we're going to pass in the user underscore id and this user underscore id is going to be referencing this user id here and next you're going to get this new underscore skill remember that is the second argument which is going to be referencing this skill over here all right so i'm going to save this and this is it for the user id and this new skill and for this to work without any issues it's important that we regenerate the types so that it can also pick up the type for this arrow pc now if you were having errors while you were you know writing this function it's just because you it's just because you hadn't you know added these types synced with your application all right so once we have all of this we can come over here and reload the browser and we're going to come back to here update this record where we can get the data and i'm going to call this form response you can call it any name and also the, you can have the error which i'll call form error like this and i'm going to return this as an array so that we can destructure it in the front end so we're going to i'm going to return the form response and i'm also going to return error so you know or do mark that i'm not error form error like this form error here all right so we're going to be coming back to our page so our page.csx our user profile page and once we go on and call this update new skill which is calling the rpc function remember we gave it the names of our form response so i'm just going to copy this to make sure we don't have any errors we gave it the name of form response and we also gave it the name of form error over here so we're going to destructure it and if we have any error or if we have any response i'm just going to log this to the console still inside this function and once we are done we want to go on and revalidate path so revalidate path means we're going to tell next.js to update our cache and this is for the slash profile path like this okay if you hover on this you see it is okay there's no explanation but yeah it should be coming from next cache cool so let's give this a trial and see if we have done everything that we are meant to do correctly i'm going to reload our application and now we are going to trigger the function to add a new skill i'm going to add a skill of react again we don't have the ui update for the loading and stuff like that if we click on add and we come back to our terminal we see we have null returned from this form response now one reason we can have null is because you know our function is returning void and the function that returns void if we print out the response to the console you will definitely see null so this function is returning void and on that thing that is why my see null if it was not successful but 
Now let's see, at least we do not have an error if our update was successful. We're going to come to the table editor users and we should see React in here, which is super, super cool. That means we are calling this function, our, this remote procedure call, as though we defined it right in our code. You can come over here and you see the way everything is working. We are calling the function, we are passing the argument, we are getting the response, which is super, super cool. And I'm going to get rid of this and now let's try to add another form another skill and i'm just going to add html click on add now the concatenation should work it shouldn't update everything and now we see html cool so that means if we console.log the user data we see that it is you know it has updated automatically and now we can no longer or you see we have these skills array over here which is super super cool so that means we no longer need to hard code these skills we have here for these list items. We can just come over here and say the user data dot skills. Um, what do we call it? The user data dot what? Okay, we are not seeing skills because we haven't updated this user data. If we come over to our types app dot ts, we haven't added skills here. So this is going to be a string array like this, an array of strings. And now if we come back here and we are trying to do user data dot skills like this, we can go to map where we have each skill and we are going to return this list item. I'm going to cut this, paste this in here. And rather than have JavaScript, we are going to have the skill here and we are in a map so we can just have our key here. And the key is going to be the skill. So with all of these done, let's um, give this another shot. We should now see HTML and React making sense. And if I just add JS and click on add, we should see JS here if it's successful. Cool. So you see we are revalidating the path. We don't have to reload our browser or anything like that. On uh, the form, you can just um, easily reset the form. And now we are going, now we have seen the functions, the, um, usage of superbase we can authenticate we have seen our pc calls we have seen everything like that we have seen middlewares and lastly we just want to go on and update the user profile which is um, the user profile page so let's say we are not authenticated we want to go on and redirect the user sorry this profile page if we are not authenticated we want to redirect the user to a home page so how can we do that? Very much straightforward. Um, we can come here. You remember we have this get user data, which gets the Superbase client. And with this, we are going to get our user. So it's as simple as if we don't have any user, we should just go on and redirect the user. So we already have everything we need in our profile page. So if we don't have any user data, that means we are not able to get the user from our session. Remember, we are making use of the server client here and in that case we just want to redirect the user back to the home page so we can say if there is no if there is no user data like this we can say redirect which will be coming from next navigation which will redirect to slash um yeah just the home page like this so let's go on and save this and come back to the application we are going to sign out we're going to go to the profile page and once we sign out, we should be redirected to our home page. Give this a second, and we are not actually um, redirected. And the reason is because we are not returning, okay? We need to return this redirect like this. And also, let's not forget to console.log the user data like this. And you see no user null, no user null is being printed here because we don't have any user. And you see automatically we are redirected and we try to navigate again to the profile page we are also kicked back to the home page, which is super, super cool. So that's it. I'm going to get rid of this user data. We are logging here and now we are in the home page. You see here, it's kind of broken. We have this profile here. And one thing we can do on this button, if we come over to our user card, where is it here? Um, just give this a second, come over to our components. Here in our user card, you see we have this link to the profile, okay? And which is this. So what we can do here, we are in the server component. 
uh, we want to get the user data okay and I'm actually going to make this to be a client component because I want to make use of hooks so use clients and I want to get read some data from the use context I'm going to come here um, use context and this is just I want to make use of my form so any way you're handling from your application is totally fine and that is our authentication form context so our what did we call it if we come over to our context here we have our, uh -huh, our auth model context I'm going to call the auth model context and from here we can get the um, toggle authentication model okay and what we can do is here um, we can have this button that says if there is no user not like this if there is no user data then we want to go on and have a button i'm just going to say if no user data is true then i will not have this link it's true like this one should go on and show a button okay which will be coming from our ui and i will just call it um auth okay otherwise then we're going to show our link and this button on click is going to toggle the where is it toggle the authentication model so now if we come back to our application we should not see profile here we should see auth cool and you can give this different variants of your choice to just style it quickly and the variant i'm gonna give is any variant just give it destructive variant and we see our auth so now if we click on auth you see we are now um, prompted to authenticate with these different providers i authenticate via google and once we are authenticated we should now have access to our page so now we are authenticated we see everything populated and we can now visit the profile page and we can also sign out so this is it if i did miss out anything any um, feature that you need strictly for your application please do let me know i was able to record this at a stretch and hopefully i was able to cover up without uh, as much as possible without any lag okay guys so that's it if you're new here please do go on and subscribe i look forward to seeing you in future projects bye bye